Welcome back to Every Other Carl. I'm Carl, and today I'm replacing the crankshaft position sensor on my 2003 Porsche Boxster. So about a week earlier, I was driving on the highway in fifth gear. I'd been driving for about 20 minutes when all of a sudden a warning light appeared on the temperature gauge. The gauge itself went all the way to the left as if the engine was cold, and the check engine light came on. I pulled over, turned the car off, and it wouldn't start. I later realized that it would only start about an hour later when the engine had completely cooled off. Here's a flashback to the day this happened. Flashback. All right, I drove the car for a little over 20 minutes, and what I think is that the temperature got to a certain point, and then the car just told me that it's not gonna read the temperature anymore. Basically, this light, this light right here, right above the temperature gauge, started flashing on me, and the temp actually all went all the way to the left. So I was concerned, pulled over and stopped, turned the car off, and then it wouldn't start. So I'm gonna try it one more time right now just to show you that it won't start. Yeah, it's turning over, but it won't start. So I did a little bit of digging on this already while I've just been sitting here waiting in the car for my wife to come pick me up. And if I'm right, this video is gonna show me replacing the crankshaft position sensor. So a check engine light did pop up for me as well. And uh, it just so happens I took care of a different check engine light recently and I had my scanner in the car with me. So I went ahead and I scanned that check engine light and I had two codes that popped up. I had a P0335, that was the crank position sensor um, fault code. And then I had a P0116, that was an engine coolant temperature sensor fault code. Those two popped up for me. So we're looking at the right rear passenger side wheel well here. Take the wheel off. Look at the brake caliper here, right above it. Gonna come in and look deep into that hole there. There is a little wiring harness here that you're gonna have to unclip. Right behind there, you're gonna find the sensor. I'll show you a little better view in a second here. So you see these two wires here? There's one here and one here. This one is going up behind there to that crankshaft position sensor out in the back right there. I'm gonna take the bracket off that's holding these two wires in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that sensor out. All right, I'm gonna to attempt to give you some perspective here. If you come into the wheel well behind here, it's definitely close quarters, but come up in here, you're gonna see those wires there. But you should take that bracket off in order to get access to the actual sensor. So different model years are gonna be different, but mine has this black wiring harness down here bolted in. You gotta take that bolt out in order to access the actual sensor behind it. But then the sensor wire is going up to this white harness. That was really hard to get out for me. Uh, some people recommend unbolting the little metal bracket that it's in. It's this little U-shaped bracket. Try to get some light in here. Right behind there, this little metal bracket here. Unscrewing that little U-shaped bracket proved to be incredibly difficult for me. I couldn't really get anything to that bolt while the wiring harness was actually clipped in. So what I did was just use some um, offset pliers and pulled that white wiring harness right out of that U-shaped sleeve there, the bracket, and I left that bolt in place. So I don't have to replace that grounding wire or uh, have to deal with anything there. I can just slide the new one in. I think I'll put a little WD-40 on it so it slides in nice and easy. So only one bolt that I removed was from this black harness. That's right here. I'll have to replace it, put it back in place when I am done with the project. All right, let's get on to the sensor itself. All right, I can finally move this wire out of the way and see the sensor. And what I'm told is a five millimeter Allen wrench there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a long extension on my ratchet, come all the way out here Try to unbolt it out here. All right, here's my long extension, and I've got a five millimeter 
uh, Allen on there. I'm gonna stick it all the way in. All right, I got my long extensions going in there. Um, you can get a little bit closer with your ratchet handle if you use a shorter extension and just turn it from in here. But I connected my five millimeter Allen wrench to the end of this extension, put it in there, and then I tapped it in there with my hammer just against this extension just to try to get that bolt as free as possible before I start turning it because it is extremely hard to access if that bolt actually stripped. So. Hammered that five millimeter Allen wrench in there, confirmed that it is five millimeters, and uh, started turning it gently. Finally, it broke free, and now I'm taking it out. All right, now I should be able to pull that sensor right out. Got it. And it's looking very crusty, so that's probably the reason it needs a new one. All right, new one going in. All right, the new sensor is in. I didn't go crazy torquing down that little bolt. I didn't want to strip it because it is very hard to get to there. So. Put it in snug, gave it an extra eighth, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook the wires back up to where they belong. We should be good to go. All right, the new sensor is in. I hooked everything back up, screwed all the brackets back into place. Now I'm gonna put the wheel back on. I would not consider this an easy job. It is very technical. You gotta kind of get in there and get your fingers in little small places, but a lot of things on a, a Porsche are kind of technical. So it is doable. You can do it yourself and uh, save yourself a lot of money getting in there. So I'm gonna put the wheel back on, take it for a test drive, see how it goes. All right, I brought the car out and I plugged it in to check the check engine code. Let's see what codes we got. There it is, the P0335 crankshaft position sensor. And then what else do we got? Again, the position sensor. So I'm going to clear these two and then uh, we'll drive it for a while see if they come back all right I've had it running for at least 30 minutes now I'm gonna take it on a little drive and get it properly warm all right I just took it on a test drive for about 20 minutes and I had it running for about an hour so it got up to temperature got up to speed went through all the gears and I'm pretty sure the problem is resolved all right, I hope that video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. If you like the video, like the video. And until next time, I'm Everyther Carl, and I'll see you.